Good day everybody. We're going to talk about ticketing today. We're going to talk about auto ticketing, ticketing groups, ticketing templates, and manually creating tickets from uh, those templates that we set up. So with that said, we're going to get started. But this assumes you've already set up your ConnectWise settings and you've verified you're connecting to ConnectWise. If so, you can come down on the left hand side to the ticketing option. We're going to open this up. And first we need to get started by creating some ticketing templates. This is just uh, going to allow us to either create ticket tickets very quickly manually or uh, we can automatically use these to create tickets in the future. So that said, we're going to set up uh, three different types of templates today just to give an example of each. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see ticket groups and the three different types of issues that we're going to create templates for a backup issue, offline server, or a billing issue. So let's create a template for each one and we'll get started. We're just going to name these very intuitively exactly what they are. So the first one we'll just name a backup issue template and we'll do the same for the others as we go to these. So I am going to choose my backups board and as I choose the board it's going to talk to ConnectWise and go out and find uh, what um, statuses and, and that kind of thing that's available for this board so when the ticket is created we want it in a new status in this case we're going to leave it on that and the auto ticket close status is here if a problem self resolves before someone uh, changes a status on the ticket and assigns it to themselves to work the system will go back and close it this tells you tells the system what do you want it to close what status do you want it to close in so Maybe you just want it resolved, you don't want it completely closed, but I'm going to set this to close. That way if a, an issue appears and then uh, is resolved on its own before someone has a chance, it's just gone off the board and they don't have to worry about it. So type, in this case, we're going to do a backup failure. Subtype, we'll just pick one of these. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, we'll just leave this blank uh, because we're going to use this for auto ticketing. We're not going to tie this to a specific type of backup that's failing. In the summary, we're just going to use a, a clear summary, but we're going to add a token in here, which is going to be, be replaced by live data uh, when, when we go there. And I'll show you an example of that. So the tokens are available on the right. Uh, we're looking for the manage server name. We'll just copy and paste that out. In initial description, uh, let's just this here and for internal maybe for internal we want to know um, just a little bit more information since the backups weren't working what about uh, we'll do managed server so we know what servers backups are having the issue we're also going to add the uh, backup server or warehouse server however you'd like to refer to it that is the warehouse server name we're going to add in and the last thing we'll do is we'll put the path in here. Uh, that's just going to give us one spot to look for everything so we can get started in resolving this issue. And we will copy the path in and we're going to save. So once we've saved this, it becomes available in our ticket groups and we back up issue. And you can see these are all disabled. So right now we're not creating any tickets automatically. But when we flip this over, we'll start to create those tickets automatically. And since we have it, so we don't have to wait the whole time. Let's go back to make sure there are no tickets here. Let's go ahead and turn on our backup issue template and we'll save that. And now uh, the, the system's gonna be running in the background as we do the other ones. If there are backup issues and there are, it's going to create tickets and we'll take a look at them as they're created. So let's do an offline server now. And the offline Offline server template is, requires an agent to be on the server. So this would be a warehouse server that went offline. You, we, you may or may not have agents on your managed servers. The only case you would do that is if it's a hybrid server, meaning that it's both acting as a warehouse and a managed server. In that case, you would have a, a template on there, but this is warehouse uh, specific. So we'll put this on our help desk in this case. We'll say, oh, this is pretty urgent. It's reporting offline status is new and if it if it comes back online we'll just close it out type we don't have these set on this board let's say server and since this is a warehouse server we're going to use the warehouse server name 
And maybe in this case, maybe in this case, what we want to do is um, maybe we want some more information about this server too. Like when's the last time we talked to it? So let's put that in there. Put this in. Last contact. This is the heartbeat that's last on record, and we'll throw that in also. There's not really a need to do this, but I'll. I'll I'll do this just to, um, yeah. anyway, so server and last contact, the summary, it's going to get replaced. This is the offline server template. So let's save, oops, we need to save it down here where we were working. And now we can come over here and add this in and save it. Let's see, we've got our backup issues, offline servers. Offline servers are typically going to be the fastest ones to show up. That's a, a job that runs continuously and not on a, on a timer. So let's do one more ticket template. This one's going to be for a billing issue. We'll go down, we'll, or excuse me, we'll come up, we'll hit new. And uh, again, just trying to keep these very self-explanatory. In this one, we're going to send that to our accounting board. It's a low priority, let's say. It is going to be new. And if it auto um, resolves whatever that issue is, it will close the ticket. Type will do finance, agreement sync. And when we're talking about billing issues, there's nothing really attached to this other than a client name. So let's use our client uh, token just to make the summary nice and clear. And internal again we could put the client it's not necessary that the ticket will be tied to the client in question but by putting it here in the bottom you're putting everything front and center where the eyes don't have to to wander around the ticket let's do our last success these tokens are case sensitive so if you uh, are going to type these in be careful that you're using the brackets and the case sensitivity on this and let's not only know when it was the last successful, let's see if it's uh, what the last attempt was. And we'll save this ticket, we'll come over, and now we'll add this to our billing issue, and we'll save that. So let's see if we've got any of the tickets auto-created yet. We may have some for our offline servers. We may not have anything else yet, but let's take a look. Okay. We do have some backups. Uh, this job must be, be running. We have our eight tickets that matches the eight uh, issues on the board. I think we covered a lot of great ground today. Thanks for being with us. This is Chris with Evelocity Labs signing off. Have a great day.